Good day, ladies and gents. All right, so we're on day two of our midpoints. First things first, I forgot to give you the answers to page nine on our last video. So here are those answers for page nine um, right there. And now we're about to start day two. We're about to start day two of our midpoints. All right, so let's just recap this, shall we? Okay, so um, midpoint and endpoint. So depending on what you're looking for, you're going to be doing uh, one of two different patterns. Okay, so if you are um, if you are looking for the midpoint, you're just looking for the middle of those two letters. But if you're looking for the endpoint, you just continue the pattern until you find it. And it all depends on where the location is. All right, so O is the midpoint of F to X. So what this is talking about is that we have um, so F to X and O's in the middle. So it could be this way or it could be the other way. Um, F to X and O in the middle. So it could be, it could feel backwards. All right, so let's just do a couple of problems. Okay, so let's just decide on what we're looking for. So uh, where um, O is in the middle of F to X. So we're looking at something that's over here, right? So O is somewhere in the middle. So what we need to do is if we're looking, uh, we have to decide what we're looking for. We're we looking for the midpoint. We're looking for just decide. So I, in this case, and I'm going to just keep my work under the number instead of putting it over here. I'm going to put my work under the number so I know what, what work goes with what. So um, if I'm looking, I'm looking for, uh, so F, O, X, what am I missing? I'm missing the O. So I'm looking for the midpoint. And to find the midpoint, uh, to find the midpoint, we are going to be, um, we're going to be adding them, adding them together and dividing by two. So we're going to take our two points. In this case, it is negative one, positive nine. That's my F. And I'm going to be taking negative five, positive one. That's my X. I'm going to be adding them together. And dividing by 2. Add them together, divide by 2. So negative 1 plus negative 5, divide by 2. 9 plus 1, divide by 2. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to do the top all by itself. Negative 1 plus a negative 5. Boom, we get negative 6. So negative 6 over 2, then you divide it, which is negative 3. 9 plus 1 all by itself is 10, divide by 2 is a 5. And that's my answer. So, and let's see if that works. Negative 3, positive 5. Is that where we landed? Is that in the middle of that? Yes, that does make sense. So negative 3, 5, and you put the parentheses. And that's the final answer. Okay, so now let's just keep going down. Let's just do all the odd problems. So number 3. So number 3. Okay, so we're looking for, um, uh, you know, let's just, <laughs> let's, let's actually just go in order. Let's do number two. Let's do number two. Okay, so in number two, we have F, O, and we're looking for X. So um, remember, so F, O, X. So what are, uh, I'll just do the outsides this time. Um, so in this one, we're looking for, and this is the work for number two. I just wanted to do it on the outsides. Just not a lot of room down here. Uh, so we're looking for X. And this time, we're looking for the missing endpoint. We're looking for the missing endpoint. So for that one, you just continue the pattern. So that one's F, O, and X. So F was at 5, 1. O was at 1, 5. And so we would just continue the pattern. All right, so how did I get from 5 to 1? I added, uh, sorry, I subtracted 4. So subtract 4 again, and where would we land? We'd land at negative 3. Okay, and then how do we get from 1 to 5? We added 4. Just happens to be the same digit. We're just uh, adding this time. So add 4 again, and we land at 9. All right, so let's see if that worked. So negative 3, positive 9. 
Okay, so first of all, you want to know, is it on the same line? So if I connect these, kind of looks off, doesn't it? Right there, it's not a straight, but the, it might just be because, um, uh, that might just be because I uh, did something wrong or my graph sucks. But let's see, did I do everything right? Oh, right there, it was two, five. There was my typo. So I messed up right there. And so because it wasn't on the same line, I was like, wait a minute, something's wrong. So there was a typo right here. It was 2, 5. So this is supposed to be 2, 5 right here. So I subtracted 3. I subtracted 3. And then 2 minus 3 was a negative 1. All right. So I'm not perfect, because I, but a graph really catches your mistakes. So negative 1, positive 9. So let's see if that works better. Is a, Are those on the same line now? E, uh, yes, it is. That's on the same line this time. So we caught, our, we caught our mistake. So right there. So this is where my x would be. And they better be on the same line. And then does it look like... Um, that's halfway in between the RO is halfway between that. Yes, that does work. So that's so I caught my mistake right there. So the answer was negative one positive nine. Boom. All right, sweet. All right. So what did we just learn? Um, so it's really easy to uh, make typos when you're pulling out the coordinates. So um, best way to do it is put it on the graph and make sure it all lines up and you catch your mistake a lot faster. Very good. All right, and um, uh, number three, uh, number four, number five, number six, you guys give those a try. Um, I want you guys to pause the video, give them a try. And uh, the first thing I want you to do is decide, are, what are you looking for? Are you looking for the, the midpoint or are you looking for the end point? So please pause the video and figure, um, are you looking for midpoint or end point? Cool. Hopefully you guys pause the, pause the video. I hope you pause the video and figure that out. So F O X, we're missing O. So what are we looking for? Midpoint. Okay. And on number four, F O X, we're looking for O. So what are we looking for? We're looking for midpoint. On number five, F O X, we're looking for F. So we're looking for endpoint. Okay. And on number six, F O X, we're looking for X. We're looking for endpoint. All right. So hopefully uh, you found those. Okay. So now what I want you guys to do on three, four, five, um, and six, I want you guys to write down, uh, the coordinates that the coordinates that we, we actually have and put them in either, um, getting ready to add them together, divide by two, or put them, um, in order to prepare them for the end point. So go ahead, pause the video do, and do that again. All right, so hopefully you pause the video. Let's see. Um, so we're looking for midpoint, so we're going to be adding together divided by 2. So your F and X. Your F is 5, 1. Your X is 2, 5. So we're about to add them together, divide by 2. So but the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the coordinates correct. Make sure you have the correct coordinates. All right. Um, for number four, we're looking for midpoint again. All right, so your F is 2, 2. And your X is negative 4, 2. Number five. So this is endpoint, so we're lining them up. So F, O, and X. Leave some space on the left side. Um, so F, O, and X. So we ha uh, we're looking for F. We have O, which is at 2, 
2, and then your x is at negative 4, 2. Okay, and we're going to be looking for the pattern. And finally, number 6. I should have put it on this side. Um, F, O, X, we're looking for X and endpoint. So F, O, X, your F was negative 1, 9, and your O was negative 5, 1. Okay, uh, so we're going to pause the video again, and I want you guys to go find those answers. Pause the video and go find those answers. Hopefully you pause the video. Okay, let's go ahead and figure this out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add these numbers together, divide by 2. So 5 plus 2 divided by 2. That's 7 over 2, uh, which is 3.5. And then 1 plus 5 over 2, that's 6 over 2, which is 3. So um, this could either be 3.5, comma 3, or you could have 7 over 2, comma 3. Both answers are correct. So let's see if that actually made uh, logical sense. See if I can brighten that up a little bit. All right, so we have 3.5 comma 3 comma 3. Yep, so right about here. Yep, that looks about right. Yeah, right there smack dab in the center. So 5.1, yep, so 3.5. So that does look correct. Okay, so boom. So that is 3.5 comma 3, and that's your final answer on that one. Make sure you put parentheses. All right, on this one, add them together, divide by 2. So 2 plus negative 4 over 2, and 2 plus 2 over 2. We get negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1, 4 over 2, which is 2. Okay, so be careful on this. You, you want to make sure that you add the top before you divide by 2 because... This is what happens. A lot of people go 2 plus negative 4 divided by 2, and notice I got 0, which is incorrect. What you did was you only would have divided by this last number. What you want to do is add the top all by itself equals then divide by 2. So you want to do 2 plus negative 4. It's by itself. Sorry. Uh, 2 plus negative 4 all by itself divided by 2. You get negative 1. Okay, so you want to do the entire top by itself, then divide by 2, okay, or you'll get the wrong answer. All right, and let's double check that we got the right thing. So that is negative 1, positive 2, which is right here, and that does look like it's in the middle. So that does, that that is correct. So that is negative 1, comma 2, and that's our final answer. All right, number, number 5. All right, so number five, we're looking for the, uh, we're going to continue the pattern. So we're going up. So negative four to two, how do you get there? So negative four. Um, now, a lot of people have been having trouble with this of, um, we'll see, are you going, are you adding, are you subtracting, how much? So uh, I'm going to help you guys out with that. All right, so let's look at it this way. Um, we have. Uh, let's make a number line. I'll zoom out. So we have a number line where this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Negative 1, negative 2, and I keep going on this. Okay, so I'm starting at negative 4. Now, um, so, and we're going to be, and we know that going up is adding and going down is subtracting. So, um, I want to get from negative 4 to positive 2. So, am I adding or subtracting? That would be adding. And I'll be adding how much? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So I would have added six. And that's how you make that decision. Are you adding or subtracting and how many hops? So we would have added six. Okay, let's do it again. Add six again. So two plus six would have been eight. All right, let's try again. I'm at two and I'm going to two. I didn't even move anywhere. I'm at two, I go to two, I would have added zero. So add zero again and you would be at two. So let's see if that works. Um, so we're at eight comma, um, comma two. Does that make sense that F is right there? Yeah, that does. And O would still be smack dab in the center. Yeah, so, um, so my F was located at 8, 2, and you put parentheses on that. Okay, so that number line is very important for a couple of you guys. You guys have a little trouble with adding, subtracting positive and negative numbers. So I made a vertical line, and you just put it in basically in money form, and you have a better idea getting that right. Okay, and number 6. Okay, so on number 6, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we are... Um, we're going from negative 1 to negative 5, and we're going to continue that pattern. So from negative 1 to negative 5, we're starting at negative 1. We're going to negative 5. So I'm going down. So that would be subtraction. And by how much? Negative 1 to negative 5, that's 1, 2, 3, 4 hops. So I subtracted 4. So subtract 4 again. So keep up that pattern. 1, 2, 3, 4. Where did I land? I landed at negative 9. So subtract 4 again, I landed at negative 9. All right, 9 to 1. Okay, 9 to 1, I would have been subtracting because I'm going down. And I would have been subtracting 8. So subtract 8. Subtract 8 again. So right now, I went from 9 to... I subtracted 8. Subtract 8 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Where did I land? I landed right here at negative 7. So negative 9 comma negative 7. Oops. Negative 9 comma negative 7. All right, let's see if that makes sense. Negative 9 comma negative 7. It is right here. And let's see if that's on the same line. Yep, that is on the same line. See how I just got a straight edge? Yep, they're all on the same line. And that, and this other, um, and my O still looks like it's smack dab in the center. So my X is right there, and that's my final answer. All right, so hopefully that helped you guys out. Um, and let's go ahead and talk about the next thing, which is on radicals. Let's talk about radicals a little bit, shall we? So let's talk a little bit about radicals while we're at it. Um, got a couple more minutes of uh, note taking if we can. So this should be part of your part two packet. Uh, let's see. Let's take a little note. You already have stuff on the right side. I'm just going to be adding. Um, I'm just going to be talking about that again. So you don't have to copy this down because I already did it for you. All right. So radicals. See this right here is called a square root. That's called a square root. And so we want squares. So uh, so 2 squared, so that's 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 squared, which is 9. And I'm just going to keep going. 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared, so it's 6 times 6 is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 8 times 8 fell on the floor, picked it up, it's 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. Be careful, a lot of people put 114 by accident. 13 squared is 169. And I believe that's where I stopped, so dot, 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 dot. So it goes on forever and ever. Okay, so, um, so the basic gist of this is, uh, um, I gave you some random notes, but I'll just... Uh, let's see if I can remember it because I don't have a page in front of me. All right, so um, the square root of 18. Now we want squares. We want the squares. So uh, 
So the square root of 6 and the square root of 2, that doesn't help you out with anything. Or square root of 3, sorry. 6 times 3 doesn't help you. You want squares. And what is a square that you can take out of 18? You can divide by 9. So that is really square root of 9 times square root of 2. So 18 is another way of saying 9 times 2. And what's the square root of 9? It is 3. And square root of 2 we're stuck with, and that's our answer. So that is how we simplify the radicals. That's how we simplify the radicals. All right, so now uh, let's do uh, some other examples. Um, and I know I gave you some more examples down here. I just can't remember them right now, so I'm just going to do some random problems. All right, so here we go. Um, okay, 75. Okay, so what you want to try to do is divide by these, uh, these um, squares and any of these numbers that you can take out. Now, I'm going to show you what's going on in my head. I'm going to show you what's going on in my head, and that would be uh, I'm basically taking uh, taking these squares and trying to see if they can come out. So what can come out of 75? So 75, the biggest number, um, the biggest square possible so far is 64. So 81 is too big. I would try 64, 49. I would try these numbers. So, um, so let's see. So I'm trying those squares. So in my head or in my calculator, I'm going to go, uh, can I take 75 divided by 64? I get 1.7 and goes, so that doesn't work. I'm trying these squares that I can take out. So that doesn't work. How about 75 divided by 49? That's 1.5. That's a decimal. I don't want that. How about 75 and 36? Nope. That is, uh, 2.08. I don't want that. How about 75 divided by 25? Yes, that gives me a pretty number three. So I'm trying to take out um, one of the squares. So what we just found out was the square root of 75. It's really the square root of 25 times the square root of three. It's 70. It's 25 times three. So that that would be the best number I can do. So what's the square root of 25? Five. And we're stuck with a square root of 3, and that's your final answer. So 5 radical 3. Okay, um, and then 36. 36 actually is a radical. And what's the square root of 36? 6. Not the square root of 6, it's just 6. So that's a nice pretty number. All right, how about the square root of 80? Okay, I understand that a bunch of people are like, oh, that's square root of 8 times square root of 10. But 8 is not a radical, uh, 8 is not a square, and 10 is not a square. It's not one of these magical numbers over here. So that doesn't work. So what is the biggest square you can take out of there? So you would just divide by these numbers until you get a whole number, and 16 is the best number. So that would be the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. So 16 times 5 is another way to say 80. And notice I always put the square in the front because when you take the uh, when you take the square root or the radical, both are the same name, um, both are both mean the same thing. Square root of 16 is the number 4, and we're left with square root of 5. And that's our final answer. Okay, um, I will do one more for you. Okay, how about 8? What is a radical you can take out of 8? What's a square you can take out of 8? 4. Square root of 4 times square, uh, square root of 2. 4 times 2 is 8. What's a square root of 4? 2. And we're left with square root of 2. And that's our final answer. Okay, so go ahead, um, give the rest of these a try. And um, in class, I will go around and uh, let you guys know if you guys are getting it right or wrong. All right, hopefully that helped you guys out. Have a great and wonderful day.